Old Yeller, Chapter 5, Part 2 Now the she-bear was charging across the shallows in the creek. She was knocking sheets of water high in the bright sun, charging with her fur up and her long teeth bared, filling the canyon with that awful coughing roar. And no matter how fast Mama ran or how fast I ran, that she-bear was going to get there first. I think I nearly went blind then, picturing what was going to happen to little Arliss. I know that I opened my mouth to scream, and not any sound came out. Then, just as the bear went lunging up the creek bank toward little Arliss and her cub, a flash of yellow came streaking out of the brush. It was that big yellow dog. He was roaring like a mad bull. He wasn't one-third as big and heavy as the she-bear, but when he piled into her from one side, he rolled her clear off her feet. They went down in a wild, roaring tangle of twisting bodies and scrambling feet and slashing fangs. I raced past him. I saw the bear lunge up to stand on her hind feet like a man while she clawed at the body of the yellow dog hanging to her throat. I didn't wait to see more. Without ever checking my stride, I ran in, jerked little Arliss loose from the cub. I grabbed him by the wrist and yanked him up out of the water and slung him toward Mama like he was a half-empty sack of corn. I screamed at Mama. Grab him, Mama. Grab him and run. Then I swung my chopping axe high and wheeled, aiming to cave in the she-bear's head with the first lick. But I never did strike. I didn't need to. Old Yeller hadn't let the bear get close enough. He couldn't handle her. She was too big and strong for that. She'd stand there on her hind feet, haunched over, and take a roaring swing at him with one of those big front claws. She'd slap him head over heels. She'd knock him so far, it didn't look like he could possibly get back there before she charged again. But he always did. He'd hit the ground rolling, yelling his head off with the pain of the blow. But somehow, he'd always roll to his feet. And here he'd come again, ready to tie into her for another round. I stood there with my axe raised, watching him for a long moment. Then, from up toward the house, I heard Mama calling, Come away from there, Travis! Hurry, son, run! That spooked me. Until then, I'd been ready to tie into that bear myself. Now suddenly, I was scared out of my wits again. I ran toward the cabin. But like it was, Old Yeller nearly beat me there. I didn't see it, of course, but Mama said the minute Old Yeller saw we were all in the clear and out of danger, he threw the fight to the she-bear and lit out for the house. The bear chased him for a little piece, but at the rate old Yeller was leaving her behind, Mama said it looked like the bear was backing up. <laughs> but if the big Yeller dog was scared or hurt in any way when he came dashing into the house, he didn't show it. He sure didn't show it like we all did. Little Arliss had hushed his screaming, but he was trembling all over and clinging to Mama like he'd never let her go. And Mama was sitting in the middle of the floor, holding him up close crying like she'd never stop. And me, I was close to crying myself. Old Yeller, though, all he did was come bounding in to jump on us and lick us in the face and bark so loud that there, inside the cabin, the noise nearly made us deaf. The way he acted, you might have thought that the bear fight hadn't been anything more than a rowdy romp that we'd all taken part in for the fun of it. And we'll start on Chapter 6 in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Please reach down, click like, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.